So the basic argument of the Great Depression macroeconomics in review is that in order to actually understand the Great Depression, we better understand some economics and in particular macroeconomics. So what we're going to do here is we're going to review macroeconomic schools of thought in what causes recessions and what we should do once we're in a recession. That's what we're particularly going to focus on here. So here's our basic breakdown. We're going to cover a number of different schools of thought. We have the classical school, the new classical, monetarists, what we're calling modern monetarists, Austrians, Keynesians who support fiscal policy activism, Keynesians who support monetary policy activism, and new Keynesians. So we want to think about, well, what causes these recessions? And then what can we do once we are in a recession? What action steps should we take in order to get the economy back on track? Now, these are broad overviews, and there's lots of people who have kind of unique views within each of these different schools of thought, but we'll get a basic idea of the consensus from these different schools of thought, and we can review what they actually view as the cause and action steps uh, in per as they pertain to recessions. So first up is the new classical school, and in particular, a subgroup called the real business cycle theory. And the way we can understand the cause of recessions with real business cycle theory is through a metaphor. The new classicals and the real business cycle theorists, they believe that we have a car as our economy, right? And the car runs really, really well. However, every now and then we can have bad performance by our car. And the way that th that can happen is twofold. One, we can have an exogenous shock to the car. That could be like somebody else hitting our car, right? It's from the outside of our economy. It's things like bad weather, a pandemic, right? Something real from the outside hits our economy. Or the second way is that we could have bad policies. So maybe we're just a bad driver. It's not the problem with the car. It's that we have kind of somebody bad at the wheel uh, steering the economy towards bad outcomes. Up next would be the monetarists. The monetarists rely heavily on the idea that monetary policy influences our macroeconomy greatly. And so bad monetary policy uh, decreases the economy or creates instability in our economy uh, by manipulating the money supply. So the monetarists uh, kind of originally kind of following the works of Milton Friedman said, hey, let's make sure that we have clear standard monetary policy that's not active and discretionary and just keep things stable so that we actually don't cause more harm than the gain that we get from being active when it comes to monetary policy. Our modern monetarists really can follow in the footsteps of the monetarists here, and they could say bad monetary policy. And they can also kind of follow in the footsteps of the new classicals and say that, hey, real shocks happen to the economy and we want to be aware of them as well. But still the focus is really on monetary phenomena. The Austrians suggest that the Federal Reserve uh, and their monetary policy creates a boom and bust cycle, that if the Federal Reserve lowers interest rates too far, that we create a boom that cannot be sustained. It eventually leads to a bust. The bust is problematic because we have had malinvestments, investments in the wrong lines of production within our economy. And the fact that we have heterogeneous capital, that capital can't just be transferred from one sector of the economy over to another. And so the bust is really problematic and we get a, a bad fallout from the boom that was created. We get a recession after a period of kind of boom and increase in the economy. Keynesian fiscal policy advocates talk about the idea of animal spirits, the idea that we kind of follow this herd-like behavior when it comes to uh, our aggregate demand and especially investment. Um, so consumers are driven by kind of consumer confidence and they see other investors and other things in the economy as you know moving ahead or falling behind. And we're not really rationally calculating the potential payoffs to investment via interest rates and net present values and instead we're kind of following this herd-like mentality the psychology of kind of the masses around us keynesian activist monetary policy advocates you know we can say basically the same thing as the fiscal policy advocates there's no real uh discrimination there between those two schools of thought 
And then the new Keynesians, we can keep those same Keynesian aggregate demand problems, but you can add in the additional problem of sticky prices, sticky wages. The idea that, especially in the downward direction, prices have a hard time adjusting our economy back to good. And so we are likely to kind of get stuck in a below full employment equilibrium where we have some kind of recession that's happening. All right. So those are our causes of recessions. Uh, we're not going to focus on uh, the cause too much here, but it does help kind of indicate to us uh, a little bit of information. What's going to be really important for us here is this second column, though. And so what do we do once we're in a recession? The classicals say, hey, just allow international trade, allow for trade to take place, reduce the transaction cost of trade taking place. And that leads towards greater wealth gains for an economy. And then the ups and downs within the economy aren't as hard to take when we have that increased gain. And then they also talk about the idea that a macro economy will really have this kind of self-corrective mechanism. That if times get really tough, if we're in a recession, what happens is our resource prices drop and our interest rates drop. And that causes our supply and our demand side to both kind of move back out towards our potential output for the economy and back to our long run equilibrium. For the new classicals, we have multiple different little subgroups um, and they would say various different things and, and deal with different kinds of recessions in different ways. Uh, but some important elements that we want to emphasize here is that the real business cycle theorists would say, hey, if we're having bad policies that are driving us into a recession, get rid of those policies. Just get rid of those policies and let the economy correct itself. Um, so kind of similar to the original classical side. And then also we have these supply siders within new classical economics that are very big on decreasing taxes. Taxes get in the way of the trade that we talked about with the classicals, right? So we want to decrease transaction costs, allow exchange to take place. Exchange is mutually beneficial. It's what creates wealth. And so taxes are just one way of getting in the way of those exchanges from taking place. So if we can decrease taxes as much as possible, that can help push the economy forward. The monetarist solution to bad monetary policy, the original uh, Friedman K percent rule is an example we can go with here. This creates monetary stability and then it allows the price system to work. So it allows the economy to self-correct and to adjust to the situations and let's entrepreneurs and investors make decisions about the future that create wealth and allow the economy to get back on track. The modern monetarists uh, suggest you know, something similar to a K percent rule, but here we have the Taylor rule or NGDP targeting. And here what we would say is in both of those rules, if we hit into a recession uh, via these rules, which would allow for the certainty uh, that we're following a rule-based system and allow investors to understand what's going to happen, right? Uh, similar to the original monetarists. But here, what would happen according to both of these approaches, the Taylor rule and NGDP targeting, is that the money supply would increase some, right? So we would have some kind of expansion in the money supply when a recession hits. Now, we're not really going to talk about the Austrians with what they would do in an action step with a recession, just like we didn't talk about the cause of recessions with the classicals. It's not really going to be important to what we have going forward. But the Austrians would be very much so in line with the classicals, the new classicals, and even the monetarists kind of uh, saying hands off of the, the Federal Reserve money supply here. The fiscal policy Keynesians, however, what do they say? Hey, if we get stuck in a recession, we need to act. And their recommended action is to use fiscal policy. It's to go into a deficit when we're in a recession. When you go into a deficit, what you have to do is you have to make sure that you're spending more than you're bringing in in terms of revenue. So we have two basic approaches that we can do here. We could increase government spending, ceteris paribus, or we could decrease taxes, ceteris paribus. Right? So holding everything else constant, we have two approaches, increase government spending or reduce taxes. Now, the Keynesian fiscal policy advocates suggest for a number of different reasons that they really prefer to go with increases in government spending as opposed to decreases in taxes. But both really could lead us towards a deficit. And that's really their claim is move towards a deficit. Keynesian activist monetary policy advocates would say, hey, if we're in a recession, what's our action step? It's to 
engage in expansionary monetary policy, right? There's lots of different ways that the Federal Reserve can engage in expansionary monetary policy, but a couple of ways that are going to be important for us to note here within our story is that we would have the Fed buy bonds or drop the discount rate or drop the reserve requirements. All of these policy levers by the Fed are such that we have expansionary monetary policy. It puts money into the economy, into the hands of the individuals in the economy. The new Keynesians would build off of these ideas of Keynesian fiscal or Keynesian monetary policy, right? So a lot of new Keynesians would suggest that, hey, if we're in a recession, first try monetary policy. Monetary policy should be the first step. But if we get in really deep, then let's try fiscal policy. All right, so that has been our review of our macroeconomic theories. Now it's time to get back into the story of the Great Depression and see how these macroeconomic theories provide some insight as to what actually happened during the Great Depression and what made the Great Depression so great.